Hi everyone! So today, it's not just the fourth day of Christmas, it's, act it's actually Christmas Eve. And this is why today we'll talk about snowflakes. Not just any snowflakes, however, they need the Von Koch snowflake, which is a fractal. That title to me way too long to write because my marker is watching. It's not good as black and pen, but never mind. Okay, so the Von Koch snowflake is defined as such. So suppose you take a nicely drawn equilateral triangle and then you trisect each of its sides um, a bit like this and then you add equilateral triangles to each side like this kind of like this I should say because it's not it's far from exact but it's better than nothing I guess and then you take all of the remaining sides and you add triangles with their side being at a third of the segment they're lying on a bit like this hold on this was a bad triangle this is slightly better triangle and yet you this continues on and on and on and on up until infinity because well it's obviously a fractal and now what what we're interested in today is the area of this ring because the perimeter is boring because since it's infinity jagged it's obviously going to diverge but the area is going to converge and today we won't necessarily talk about the Van Cork snowflake per se like this one but we'll talk about a more generalized form and yeah here it is so basically take any regular polygon I'm going to take um, a square because it's easy to draw kind of correctly I guess and then that square will have a side length of s because yeah and then well actually we'll choose a polygon with k sides so let me make this clear poly with k sides so this is a polygon with k sides here is the case where k equals 3 and k equals 4 so let me just specify that and now onto each side we append a square well a polygon a regular polygon with k sides with length rs where r is less than or equal to 1 it is less than 1 sorry strictly less than 1 because if not it's going to diverge do this for all the squares and then for each of the remaining sides we make a square like this or a polygon with k sides i should say because this is the case where k equals four and that square well that polygon will have a side of r squares because it's r times r times s and so on and so on until infinity and we want to find the area of this shape in terms of r k and s so let's get started okay so first of all let's say that the iteration zero is our original polygon so let's call our iterations n and now we will let a n be the number of new shapes that appear in each iteration for so for example here for k equals 3 we have one shape in iteration 0 then three more shapes in iteration 3 then one, two, three, four, 12 more shapes in iteration 2 and so on S similarly for here and we'll also let sn be the length of the side of each of those polygons in the n iteration okay so let's compute this for like first iteration let's say 0 1 2 3 so a n as 0 is obviously going to be 1 because it's just the original and s n is obviously going to be s because well reasons okay and now iteration 1 to each side we append one polygon so since it has k side we'll, we'll have k polygons and then the sn will be r times s as i mentioned 
And let's do the SNs first because it's going to be simpler. So then we have R squared F because R times that and then R cube S. And from that we can compute that S. Yeah, let's choose N. SN is equal to S. Yeah, times R to the N because S1, S, S naught is R to the, the zero. S1 is S times R to the N and so on and so on and so on. But then for the a n, that's my little trick here. So for the case where k equals 3, if we take a look at all of the sides there, we, we just created a shape. Well, how should I tell you this? Yeah. Basically, what we did is to each side, we removed one segment and then added two. So for each side, we'll have s k plus one side for so for example how should i say this well we had three sides originally but then here we have four because we appended three times triangles so we have k times k plus one because each side has k plus one sides and then same thing for here because this k equal four and we have five sides and then this right here will be k times k plus one whole thing square because all now now when we append the triangles all of these little bits will have themselves sides of four so yeah 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 that, that's basically it and from this we can conclude that our a n will be k times k plus one to the n minus one for n being greater than zero because at n equals zero the, our argument breaks it down because we get k over k plus one but that's not k over k plus 1. But then for n is greater than or equal to 1, it works. Okay, so basically, what we want, our area will be the sum. And let's use i. I go from 0 to infinity of... Yeah. So we'll have a n, uh, a i, sorry, the number of shapes in each iteration, times capital A i the area of each shape. So what is the area of, well, the, the area of each of the shapes obtained the iteration? So what is our AI? Well, obviously it depends on the polygon. So first we have to come up with a formula for a regular polygon. So let's use a pentagon because yeah, pentagons. So we have the area is equal to, okay, so we have N sides. And then what we can do is we can divide our polygon into triangles, well, n triangles, that's why we have n. And then let's have the polygon have a side of s. So we have n times, and also let, let's drop a segment from the center of the polygon to, it, to the base of each triangle, which we'll call a. So basically the area of our polygon is just n times the area of a triangle with base s and height a, but then the area of that triangle will just be s times a all over two. So we have the area is equal to n times s times a all over two, but we can do better. Actually, we can change our n to k because we have k sides because, yeah. And now our a, what can we do with it? Well, each of the angles there and there will have so it will be equal to 2 pi over n because we have n side and the total is 2 pi, so 2 pi over n. But then since this right here is obviously an isosceles triangle, this will be half of 2 pi over n, so pi over n. So in other words, we have a triangle, a right triangle at that. This angle is pi over n, this height is a, and this is s over 2 because it's half of the length. And then we can see that a will be s over 2 times the cotangent pi over n using trigonometric ratio. So we get k times s times s over 2 cotangent pi over k, actually, because we have k sides. Yeah, k all over 2. And now, yeah, the, we have an s squared and then our k cotangent pi over k, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so now we can go back to our original summation. So first, 
Yeah. We'll plug in our area formula inside of this. So we have sum where a i goes from 0 to infinity of a i times, okay, so we have s i squared, yeah, times k cotangent k, uh, pi over k, sorry, all over 4. And now, what we can what we can do is we can factor out the k cotangent pi over k all over 4. So, k cotangent pi over k all over 4. And then, we have the sum of ai times si squared. What we will, we will do is we will strip out the zeroth term. Why did I use the word strip? We'll take out the zeroth term. We'll extract out. Sorry. <sighs> okay, so we have a naught s naught squared so our a naught is one so we, this is one and our s naught is s so we have s squared i did that because we have no explicit formula for a naught because it doesn't fit for our formula and then we have the sum where i goes from one to infinity and now we can plug in the formula so we have a i which is k times k plus one to the i minus one SI is, yeah, S, two, yeah, S, so S squared, R to the 2A, because it is squared, yeah, R to the 2I, sorry, I'm getting confused in all my variables, but it is with an I. And then, what we can do next is we have K cotangent pi over K all over 4 times s squared plus and now we can factor <coughs> we can factor out the k oh yeah and we have well we can factor out the x squared as well and the x squared we have a common factor there s squared and s squared we meaning we can factor it out over there so this becomes a one and here we have s squared and then k to the plus 1 to the i minus, minus 1 can be written as k to plus 1 to the i all over k plus 1. The all over k plus 1 can be factored out. And all we have is, combining the bases, we have the sum of r squared times k plus 1 raised to the i power. And now, this right here is just a geometric series with first term r squared times k plus 1 and common ratio r squared times k plus 1. So we have s squared times k cotangent pi over k all over 4 plus 1 plus k over k plus 1 times we have r squared times k plus 1 over 1 minus r squared times k plus 1 and now the k plus 1 cancels so we have k r squared like this and then the 1 can be expanded out, actually when you erase the k plus 1s. And then the 1 can be expanded as 1 minus r squared times k plus 1. All over 1 minus r squared times k plus 1. And then the r squared can be distributed on both sides. We have minus r squared k minus r squared. And also there, while we're, while we're at it. So minus r squared k minus r squared and then these two have the same denominator so we can add the numerators the r squared squared k cancels out so we have s squared k cotangent pi over k all over 4 times 1 minus r squared all over i group the 1 minus r squared together so to make it more aesthetic 1 minus r squared minus k times r squared and now all that is really left is just to write in a nicer form so yeah we'll have 1 minus r squared this term times k all over 4 times the tangent of pi over k times 1 minus r squared minus k r squared times s squared Okay, so now that is our general formula for our area, which we'll call A, sorry, A of R, S, and K. 
And now, if we go back to our original Von Koch snowflake with k equals 3, we can plug in all the information we have. So we have area of... So the R is one third, as I said before, because it's being trisected. The S is, well, we can just use one. Well, actually, yeah, we, we can just use one because it's going to be more aesthetic. And we have, what else? Yeah, K is equal to three. So we have area of one third, one and three is one minus R squared is a ninth times k which is three. Oh yeah is that right yeah i'm double checking myself and then all over four times the tangent of pi over three which is this okay pi over three the square root of three times and then we have one more time square which is eight ninths minus Three uh, minus one minus one squared is eight ninths minus k times r squared, which is k times one ninth, so three ninths. And now what we have is eight ninths times three over four times the square root of three times five ninths because of this term, this parentheses. This and this cancels out. The square root of three can simplify with that three. The four and the eight become a two and a one, and all we're all really left is. 2 square root of 3 over 5. So yeah, that is the area of our Roncock snowflake. And yeah, I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader to actually compute not just the area, but also the ratio of the area of the whole fractal to the area of the original polygon, which is which can easily be done, and also do so for the original Roncock snowflake with the with these values for R, S, and K, because I think it's actually a nice value, like 8 fifths. Yeah, it should be 8 fifths, the ratio between the full area and the triangle, but I'll leave that as an exercise to here to check it for all the polygons, all the values of R, S, and K. And yeah, so this is the thank you for watching this video, and of course, Merry Christmas, Eve. But yeah, still, Merry Christmas.